It's undercover time once more as Michael has entered into an alternative fuel source cross-country race where some cars run on propane, solar energy, and in Kit's case, liquid hydrogen. I did like the jab at, at the Dukes of Hazard, where one set of drivers in a 1969 Dodge Charger is running on moonshine. The jab is a reference to one of the advertisements where the producer cites that the competition is no competition. It's one particular occasion we get to see Michael perceived as a player. When reporter Liberty Cox spends the night with Michael hoping to get an exclusive with him. What's very subtle about this is that you never see the love scene, which is almost a lost art in TV. Simply put, it's more thought-provoking to just use your imagination without having to see it. I use the same notion with regards to scary scenes in Jurassic Park. It's what you don't see that gets the mind racing or forming an image of what's going on. For me, this is one particular good highlight as it's good use of both Michael and Kit's capabilities. It's worth noting that Kit is outfitted with an infrared tracking radar, switches from gas to liquid hydrogen and darkens his windows for the first time. Robin Dearden does well as the intrepid reporter Liberty Cox who has a rather colourful history with the law. Brett Halsey does his job as a heel well that you just don't see it coming. But that's the work of a good villain. They're seemingly well-meaning and then you see the turn and it throws you for a loop. Patricia gets a little more participation in this episode as Bonnie, albeit almost as a background character, but it's nice to see her used. The rapport between Michael and Kit continues to improve, where the trans M appears to be developing more of a sense of humour with this exchange. Michael, you do realise that this race is academic, not to mention unnecessary. Why's that? The car of the future is already here. Me. Don Pete continues to give a great performance of a soundtrack that is suited to the tone of this story. Here come the discrepancies! Oh boy, there's a few this week. Um, there were a few that I noticed, and there was even more when I checked this up on imdb.com. Near the end, Knight saves the girl, but leaves a gag over her mouth as they race to capture the bad guys. Kit does a turbo boost jump, and as he lands, you can see in the front window, and the girl no longer has a gag on her. But as you finally stop the bad guys, the girl and Knight to get out, and of Kit, the girl tears off the gag. Michael saves the girl in the solar car after one of her tires is shot out. When he inspects the tire, he has to pry a bullet from the tire, but as he does so, you can see a giant hole in the tire that is more than lar large enough not to require the bullet to be pried from. In the scene right after the yellow solar-powered Shelby car is hit by the sniper, you can see a dinged area of missing paint on the fender above the blown tire, indicating that the car was hit there. Yet in the subsequent shots of the car, when Michael and Kit rescue it, and the lady driver from the edge of the cliff, the fender paint is fine. When Liberty escapes from the drunken racer's car, the hooligan tosses, hooligans toss her bags and camera out the window too, as they roar off again. No ordinary camera would withstand hitting the, hitting the hard pavement, especially at high speed like that. Without being smashed, yet right afterwards when the car explodes, she uses the camera to take photos of the fiery scene, and in subsequent images of the camera... It appears clean and wholly, and wholly undamaged. Liberty is captured wearing a red dress. When we next see her, she is tied up wearing a completely different outfit. In the scene when Liberty leaves the hot tub, one of the drivers takes off his hat and puts it on the water. A second later, during a close-up, he has it on again. To jump over the alcohol-fueled car, Michael presses the rocket fire instead of the rocket boost button. Also, the turbo boost is once again used as a means of increasing speed instead of the pursuit button. Overall, despite the flaws of this episode, I had fun watching it and it reminded me why I, and many Knight Rider fans the world over, love this series. Because it gives you these fantastic escapist stories that we all need to escape the boring mundane that is reality. Until next time! Good night! From the night.